Good morning, everybody. Before we start this program today, I would like to call upon S. Anantaraman from third year BCom LLB to give the invocation. Maitrim Bhajata Akilak Jetri Maitrim Bhajata Akilak Jetri Maitrim Bhajata Akilak Jetri Atma Vadeva Parana Pi Pashata Atma Vadeva Parana Pi Pashata Yudham Tyajata Spardham Tyajata Yudham Tyajata Spardham Tyajata Tyajata Pareshva Kramama Kramanam Tyajata Pareshva Kramama Kramanam Maitrim Bajata Hakilak Jetrim Janani Prithvi Kamadugaste Janani Prithvi Kamadugaste Janako Devaha Sakaladegyalo Janako Devaha Sakaladegyalo Dhamyata Deta Dayatmo Janata Dhamyata Deta Dayatum Janata Shreyo Bhuya Sakala Janana 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 Thank you, Anant Raman. I now invite Amrit Bhargav, third year BA LLB, to give the welcome address and introduction of Honorable Mr. Justice K. Kanan. I deem it my singular privilege of presenting this address and welcoming Justice Kanan of the Punjab and Haryana High Court. Born on 6 June 1954 to Sri M. N. Krishnamurti, an eminent advocate at the Kadalur and Madras High Courts, he was enrolled on 27 1977, thus becoming the third generation lawyer in his family. He had extensive practice before the Kadalur District Courts till 1992 when he shifted his practice to Madras. He was a senior uh, panel government, central government counsel, and was designated senior counsel. He also had the unique distinction of being the editor of the Madras Law Journal before being elevated to the bench of the Madras High Court on 31st July 2008. On a transfer to the High Court of Punjab and Haryana, he assumed charge on 5th November 2008. His area of interest and expertise is in law and medicine, on which he has written a book published this year by the Oxford University Press. In his detailed preface, he observes, the medical fraternity ought to know that their practices touch the lives of several persons in areas beyond treating illness. The multitude of youths in bourgeoisie medical colleges ought to be engaged in serious campus discussions on these subjects. Above all, courtroom scenes and a high incidence of persons approaching courts in conflict situations have always gone to wet general interest among white cross-sections of the public. That, friends, is a pragmatic judge who has been a forensic success as a justice, injustice, and had justicing. Justice Kannan's judgments have been noted for their analytical slant, and to quote him in Jai Prakash versus the State of Haryana, wherein he noted the tenor of the Supreme Court pronouncements and said, the Honorable Supreme Court cautioned that we have to read Uma Devi's case in conformity with Article 14 of the Constitution of India, and we cannot read it in a manner which would make it incomplete with Article 14. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and any judgment, not even of the Honorable Supreme Court, can violate the Constitution." Unquote. Justice Kandan was one of the first judges in India to declare his assets and set a new benchmark for judicial integrity. <laughs> we are humbled at his acceptance of our invitation, and as the Lord said, and as the Lord said in the Bhagavad Gita, Yadhyad Acharati Sreshtaha Tattadeve Tarojanaha. 
what great men do other people follow suit and several other judges also declared their assets after him justice kandan embodies the three i's industry in practice integrity in profession minus the i of the fact of being a judge without uh, without any ego simple and with noble ideals following the lord in chapter 3 of the bhagavad gita karmanai vahi samsiddhim astita janakadaya with this i also extend my hearty welcome to professor seturaman vice chancellor dr vaidya subramanyam dean planning and development the registrar of sastra university other special invitees deans associate deans from other schools and my student friends thank you thank you amrit um i now request dr p ravi shekhar raju head of the department school of law sastra university to present the memento to justice k kanan I would now like to invite our chief guest Justice K Kanan to the podium to share his thoughts on medicinal law. respected vice chancellor shri shetram ji the head of the department shri ravi shankar raju uh, the morning uh, ever since morning ever since yesterday mr the dean of the institute uh, shri badrinath has been there kind enough to me so uh, i uh, greet him as well uh, as a person who made it uh, made the first introduction to me and anand raman for all those uh, lovely things which was said about me i was rather uh, intrigued of what he said or what he uh, uh, spoke generally about my judgments that didn't evoke any uh, applause but then uh, on an issue where uh, when uh, the declaration of assets issue uh, came to some kind of a debate and when i declared it there was a lawyer who wrote cheekily from here uh, did you ever have any assets to declare at all so therefore i was saying no i was declaring my insolvency and that was what was uh, the accepted so therefore uh, i have nothing to declare and therefore i probably declared i don't know as a principle anyway it meant something to me as uh, as you are young when you dream when you think of how you are going to build your uh, life as old as we get we think of old things whenever i speak about in my days then my son in me immediately reminds me yes now there you go again so therefore uh, it's memories for old people it's memories for young children or young persons like you it's dreams so uh, nothing gives me greater satisfaction than being with students student being with young persons Uh, for it means so much uh, you suddenly see yourself uh, get yourself that vicarious pleasure of uh, feeling young thinking young so uh, i wouldn't let go an opportunity like this i thought when an invitation came to me when i wrote uh, something i, uh, I some, on an occasion uh, with um, uh, uh, a respected uh, person one of the found, uh, the found the son of uh, the founder Uh, i sent him a what i had written about and then he was asking whether i could uh, come here sometime there is an occasion for me a new link has been built uh, between punjab and haryana if you would like to know why i went to punjab and haryana i couldn't have been sent further there because beyond that was uh, lahore so that was the farthest i could be pushed and there i was uh, and then uh, the uh, there was a new uh, there is probably a new beginning it's nice uh, nice to see that way Uh, that uh, sanjay kishan kaul 
a person from uh, a Kashmir Pandit uh, who has come down. He's so, uh, so proud that he's coming to south where you'd go to Kanyakumari, renew his links. So he was uh, taking over as the Chief Justice of this court and uh, we, some of us arrived here. So it's been therefore a pleasure uh, to come and we will have a new Chief Justice. Persons associated with law must know uh, how a court shapes institutions. Some time back, I had a very unusual call. A, a phone call in the morning saying, uh, Uncle, will you immediately uh, uh, save me, take me from this place? Uh, I couldn't quite recognize the voice, but it was a young lady calling. And then uh, figured out a little later that uh, she was the daughter uh, of my close friend. And she had arrived in Chandigarh. She had been married to a doctor who was uh, doing a postdoctoral work. He had done his MD and then he was doing DM. She was herself a doctor. So I was wondering, well, what has happened now? No, my uh, things are being thrown out uh, from the hostel by my husband. Now, will you save me now? So therefore, uh, I sent immediately my driver. I couldn't be going there immediately. Uh, I sent my driver there. He picked up things which were there uh, lying down and then uh, got this uh, young lady. She had come to my house. I was wondering what is happening. What happened? What went wrong? You are recently married. I, I remember I got a, an invitation. And the girl said, yes, uh, uh, my father reminded me when I was going to Chandigarh that uh, uh, I have a very close friend at all times you can go. So I didn't, uh, you had not come for the marriage. So I didn't immediately take the courage of coming. Now there was really a reason why uh, that I had to come and therefore I'm coming. I was saying, uh, I was thinking, what was wrong then? Why were you not here? Now we are married for about six months, uncle, but my husband was not calling me over. So I thought uh, uh, this was not correct. And I finished my MBBS and I had done my uh, diploma course. Uh, and uh, I was just rotting in a college and I, I kept asking whether you would take me. He was saying, no, it's still time. I'm now through the final years. Don't come yet. Uh, but I decided, no, this can't go beyond this. And therefore I made it here. And then, uh, what was happening? Now, what else was the problem? So she said, uh, she put her uh, head down and said, uh, things have not been all right. We have not even uh, resumed any uh, marital life. It was uh, a little surprising to me. Both of them are doctors, responsible persons. Young girl, there was simply no reason. So uh, then, uh, what, what do you think went wrong? I said, uh, she's a smart girl, and so therefore, uh, I'm a hacker as well, ethical. Uh, so therefore, uh, I opened and try. why is this uh, man not opening up to me? Why is he not taking me? So therefore, uh, I have come by some mail, uh, which is uh, suspicious. Uh, he communicates with the person there in Tamil Nadu. Let's call the person. He communicates with some person called Chiku. Uh, I think things are not all right. Uh, so therefore, uh, uh, I have a problem. I confronted him immediately after he returned from the hospital. Uh, who is this chick in your life? So he said, now what the hell, why are you trying to take up, why did you, how did you know this? So the question is not how did I know, but who is this person? She persisted. He said, no, this can't go like this. Now I didn't want you coming here in the first place, I was still a student. And you are now breaking into my mail and then you are, uh, you are saying now who is the person? This is not how you are going to do. Our uh, uh, fight escalated to some level, he threw me out. So um, she, she, like I said, she knew where the mail had originated from. And therefore, uh, as soon as she was here, just be here, don't worry. Uh, I'll uh, find out what is happening. Then she said, now, who is this person? Have you been able to see anything from that? Yes, I know where the mail originates from. Uh, so therefore, it's a place, uh, they let us now call it. I'm not therefore revealing everything. It's uh, not going into privacy. I have something to say with reference to a topic which we have, and therefore I'm saying this. She said, uh, this, uh, she's a play, uh, person from, uh, this uh, person, this male originates from Coimbatore. Uh, I, I think uh, this, uh, this, this person is also a doctor. So uh, that, was, uh, that was the news. Then I thought, we'll find out what is this about. So I had called a doctor friend, and then I was asking, I asked a, a person, uh, do you know this person? 
Yes, I know, but uh, you seem to sound as though it is a female name. No, it's not a female name, actually. There is, I know, uh, let us say the name, uh, let us again give a name to this person. It is not uh, Ramani, it's a, a girl that is Dr. Venkat Ramani here. So therefore, uh, does it uh, mean anything to you? Uh, I said, I don't know, you should uh, tell me what, uh, what is it now. Go tell me what is this person about. Uh, tell me something about this Venkat Ramani. So the same evening, uh, uh, my cousin who is a doctor there, he, he finds out and tells me, uh, Venkat Ramani is uh, your cardio physician. Uh, what is the person there? He's also in cardio. So they said, Pro probably it's a, 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 a person is the same. Now, what is the matrimonial status of this person? The person said, uh, oh, oh, there is a problem. Venkat Ramani had a troubled marriage, they're divorced. Or probably the proceedings for divorce are there. Uh, Oh, then there is an issue for me. Now he communicates to a person who is not Ramani. The Ramani is not a girl, is a, a man. So what is the problem? So I was telling this girl who was in my house the same evening, but the next day I was able to collect this information. I told her, don't worry, things are not so bad. You're needlessly suspecting a person whom you should not have suspected. And it's just a Venkat Ramani is again a cardio physician. He's a cardio person, uh, friends, no big deal. So no, that's fine, uncle, I feel much relieved. I had already phoned up uh, her, uh, her father. Her father was coming. He was uh, a senior manager somewhere. Let's say he was working in Bombay. So therefore, he said, he will uh, come over. There's nothing to worry. It was a, a Friday. You take uh, tomorrow, Saturday, you come over. There are quite a few things which have to be discussed. He was very upset that the marriage was uh, just then. The marriage was there. The daughter has been thrown out. She was there in my house. So this, uh, I find out what, what had happened. I immediately then called up my lawyer friend and then said, so Venkat Ramani seems to have a troubled marriage. Just please find out what has happened. Find out is there any proceeding for divorce there in court. He checks up, he looks into the court uh, papers and says, yes, yes, there is a proceeding. Petition is there uh, pending. Uh, it's not disposed of yet. Uh, the petition is at the instance of his wife against her husband for divorce. It says the marriage has not been consummated, there's a problem and therefore the, the divorce application is pending. So, oh, marriage not consummated, the wife is uh, applying for a divorce. And uh, this person, Venkatramani, is no Ramani, who, who, was, uh, who she thought was a male, a fem uh, was a female, she's a male, but then there is a problem. Uh, a little more later, uh, as we uh, found, uh, when I spoke to her and uh, when I, uh, the father had also come, this, uh, uh, this person has not uh, had uh, things. Let us therefore get, I uh, wanted to see what are all the averments in the petition. The petition uh, said this person has unusual friends. Uh, he dresses up, um, this lady has stated, she wears sari, he wears sari at home. Uh, he, he, he doesn't even look up to me. So this was the this was the uh, Venkat Ramani's wife's complaint in a petition why she was applying for a divorce. A man that wears sari in her house. These are di days when girls wear pants and pants and shirts, and then here's a man who wants to wear a, sh a sari. This is a serious issue. So then uh, you so many other things fell fell to place. There were other things which were coming up, and then uh, a little more didn't take much long, much too long a time, and then. Uh, he realized that uh, the relationship with uh, the, uh, the doctor friend in Chandigarh didn't work because uh, he had a relationship with another person who was a male, but his uh, sexual preferences were different. Uh, it was about uh, uh, two males having some kind of a relationship which was uh, not essentially merely uh, a friendship in the normal conventional sense, that they both of them had different sexual preferences. You're all of you are adults and therefore I'm approaching an issue and starting with this. There are uh, serious issues now where uh, when uh, we are now moving towards a society which is in some way inclusive. It uh, allows, so long as a person's uh, personal preference is something, uh, the, the question of uh, whether it is uh, against moral or something will be, taught, will be seen in the context of what is, what, what is socially acceptable, what is amoral, how can it create an environment which is against the public interest? When uh, in Nas Foundation case in, uh, in the Delhi High Court, then the issue was whether Section 377 was constitutional or not. 
the point that was taken by Justice Shah and Murli, that one of the most eminent uh, lawyer, uh, judges of our times, both of them, they said uh, that world over things are changing. And uh, what we thought was something impossible, immoral, against religion, you must understand that 377 was not there. It was not criminalized until the British came and then enacted a law which made 377 bad. If you think in God's creation, a man and a woman are there together in order that they procreate and then it moves on to another generation. You will also have a manner of thinking that in God's creation there can be no mistake. And if there is a, 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 some section of people living in the fringes who have different sexual preferences, then it cannot again be an aberration. It is also in the God scheme of things. That there can be different preferences, there can be different relationships, so long as they do not proliferate to anything seriously wrong to affect the morality of the society, then we cannot treat them differently, we must allow them to live with dignity, said Nas Foundation. The objections were coming, surprisingly, not necessarily from the religious sections of people. There were persons who were thinking, India did not allow for this. Uh, India is uh, different. I want you to know that India is not different. There, are, uh, there, is a, there was a girl uh, uh, who had come she was still wearing her yellow th uh, uh, thread. The uh, father accompanies her. And then uh, walks into my room and says, now I got her married, he went to USA, and she has come back in two months' time. Why she come back? I said, yes, sir, I couldn't live with him. What is the problem which you have? The problem is that man doesn't look at me at all. Somehow he feels himself like a woman. I said, now how did it happen? I don't know, my, his sister also sends her uh, uh, salwar kameez from uh, Indonesia. This is a, a shocking thing. Uh, uh, what is he doing? Uh, he did the IIT engineering from, uh, chemical engineering from Madras. He was a gold medalist. Uh, my father was too pleased. He got me married. And it turns out that this person feels differently. Then I said, now send a mail immediately and saying that you have married me, there is a serious uh, deception. Uh, that you have practiced. Um, I met with my uh, uh, lawyer and he tells me that uh, you have done a criminal act of marrying by deceiving and that you are fit for a marriage to a woman. So she, he understood. He was an IT company. Like I said, he was a gold medalist. He understood what he was saying. The me message uh, he understood. He took the next flight immediately to uh, Chennai and this is in 2005. I, st I thought I will begin with two instances and then two uh, stories. This, uh, uh, when that uh, man came, I said, now, how did you get married? He said, uh, sir, how would I ever tell my mother uh, that uh, I can't marry, uh, I, I, will, I do not feel like marrying to a woman. She expected me to marry, I was the only son. My father had uh, discarded my mother. I somehow thought, along with my dad's and bigger things, who can intellect talking on these. When medicine was seen as something curative of diseases and illnesses, we are now seeing medicine going beyond curing medicine, uh, curing illnesses. But then they address issues which uh, not merely curing something, but they create something. Doctor was seen as a person who would prolong uh, the, the life and uh, take him out of the jaws of death. But now doctor is a, seen as a person who creates life. The IVF procedures and the, uh, the test tube babies gave a whole new hope to people who are infertile. A person who could not conceive, a person uh, who will not uh, uh, have a child in the normal uh, ways due to various reasons. So ovaries could be sick, a person could have low uh, uh, sperm count. There could be umpteen reasons why persons are infertile. Doctor was seen suddenly as a person who was a god in himself, who created something beyond a, a stage when, at the time of death, when somebody is saying, no, please, uh, uh, God, please give, give him life. I don't want him to die. And the doctor says, doctor, I see you like a god. So this uh, invoking god was always seen at a time when a person has to be relieved from death, give a fresh lease of life. And then now suddenly, you know, doctor, we don't have a child. You are a god. Give us a child. 
giving a child was always only a, a, essentially a prayer meant to God only. Now you see, to go to your doctor and say, give us a child, make it possible. These are things which are not done some time back. And then therefore you see a whole new situation, a doctor being seen as a God. How? God in what way? Now, from the stage when you thought you will have a child, then you say, now, uh, doctor, I want a male child. I want a female child. Now, there, uh, there were uh, preferences of the children, particularly in India, with uh, the male dominance that existed. And I'm happy to see now, I see from the, uh, if I can run through a quick calculation, probably there are no more women here than men here. And th that has been an experience as well in other places. Uh, in Punjab, uh, the uh, recruitment which we did, there were 61% uh, daily recruitment of judges. Uh, there were 71% girls than, uh, uh, and a lesser percent for boys. Now, preferences could be in some way, at some point of time it is better. But then at a uh, level of birth, you still have an issue. You want a male, female, then, then therefore they were looking for some kind of a scientific advancement. Can we make something which can make possible a child a chances to be a male or a chance to be a female? It was possible. So then again, I want a child with blue eyes. I want a child which looks different. I want brown eyes. Preferences were coming. So how do you therefore do you manipulate uh, genes, gene manipulation and how a child could be born? So therefore, what are you talking about? It's not, the issue is not whether I want a child or not. I, the issue is whether I want the child. I want this child of this uh, manner, of this complexion. Is that possible? Yes, they're possible, it's said. What do you call them? Designer babies. So therefore, from, uh, from the stage when you talk about this, is it possible? It is possible. Now, there was an issue. Now, I want a child. My wife has a problem. She can't carry. Uh, I want a child, but I have myself a problem. But I still want a child. How? Here was a man uh, in a war recently in Afghan. Uh, he leaves a will, which is rather strange. He says, now, um, uh, I couldn't even marry to a, a girl who I wanted. I'm here. I'm going to die within a short time. I'm making a will and I want my sperm extracted and a uh, woman pregnant, uh, impregnated. If you'd want a child, my child, that's what I would. And this person, uh, ultimately, the mother put it up in an advertisement. The girlfriend does not want, here is a valorous son I lost in the war. Uh, he, if, uh, would anyone get impregnated? There was a response. There were 32 persons. That's what the New York Times says. And uh, one of them got impregnated, got a child. Now we are looking uh, of a dead person um, becoming a father. You never know the preferences. So therefore doctors making possible the test tube babies getting uh, things possible. Now the issue is, do you allow for this kind of a thing to happen? We are talking about the Nazi times saw the situation of uh, ethnic cleansing is what he was talking about. And we want a child in this manner. The Christian faith is if there is a child with, a, uh, with a, a deficiency, uh, it's uh, to bring the life to full term and then secure, uh, let the child go through is the most redeeming thing. You probably, some of you have seen a Tamil picture, Anjali, or many of you are probably as children yourself at that time when the movie came. Uh, or probably you have seen it in the CD or something. There is a very touching scene where, where uh, uh, the, the, uh, the main character, the mother, uh, uh, Revati, uh, she would tell her husband, now, how is this for us? How is this fair for us? This is not appropriate. Then uh, Raghuvaran was the father, plays the father's role there. He says, uh, the God just went to took her down. He had something very precious in his hand. He said, now, I would want to place this precious child to a person who are very special. And that special parents are we. The child could not have survived anywhere else. The child cannot have a normal life anywhere else. He chose, therefore, the best of parents and delivered to us. That is the special child. And that is why we are now picked by the God and therefore we'll have the child. That's one way of looking at it. But then what kind of a child shall be born, how it should be done, and how a person can procreate, cannot. Then we had a serious uh, issue again uh, of how you make a child uh, uh, grow, uh, grow uh, in another person's womb. 
Now, probably uh, uh, Bhagavatam uh, recites some instance of, of how uh, uh, Rohini, uh, 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 this is all purely, uh, if it is mythology, at least at that time that talked about uh, transplantation of a child in the womb from one to another. Uh, and uh, uh, how Yashoda, who did not bear the child, but Devaki was, uh, but she was the mother. Uh, and uh, uh, how did uh, how did the child go from uh, from one to another was uh, some uh, some story but we'll not go to into it but then it was all thought of at various times but then um, when it became possible scientifically india was seen to be a destination that is now an issue for consideration and therefore of law uh, surrogacy is uh, a term which we would have heard of and uh, there are two, three cases which came about, which sh brings to focus a very sharp reality. Indian women can be exploited at any times at will by men. That's the truth. There's a whole new generation of persons who will be seeing uh, a man, a woman differently. But uh, given a chance to a man, if there is a manner of making money somewhere, and you put and, uh, the point, making it uh, possible to, through a woman, he would do it. It happened. Uh, in Anand in Gujarat, where uh, a woman uh, was uh, a mother, uh, was, uh, was a, uh, a surrogate mother for two persons who had uh, uh, traveled to India. They did not, they could not have a child, so they decided they will uh, hire the services of some person. There are advertisements made, infertile couples who cannot uh, procreate, there are surrogate mothers available who are prepared to rent their wombs. Rent what? Oh, for what? To bear a child. Go close to your mother and say, what is a precious moment in her life? Bearing you was probably the most precious moment. Bearing a child is something which is uh, uh, so unique in God's creation uh, uh, given uh, to women. A man cannot bear a child, a woman can. And that's the, probably the most precious gift of God. And uh, if uh, this, in this case, was uh, a, a couple coming to India, having uh, 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 there was a, a woman who could uh, who was uh, hired, and a, a uh, uh, children were born. It was twins. The Anand municipality uh, stated the father to be the commissioning parent, a German, the mother to be the person who gave birth to your child. There is never a doubt about the maternity. The doubt is always about the paternity. So therefore, it is uh, uh, the, the father's name uh, was given as a person whose sperm was given, donated, and the child that was born. A little later, the, the parents said, no, come, the, the man, uh, uh, I, I am the father, all right, the mother is not that. Uh, my, my mother is my wife. She's also a German. So he wanted it modified. Yes, it was modified. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, the mother's name was given as a German uh, 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 wife. German, it, the municipality said, who gives birth to a child is the person whom we'll have to enter, sir, therefore we re-enter only the mother's name. He had applied for a passport for these children, and the passport office, uh, he had given father and mother, mother's name, his name and his wife's name. Passport office, some, some way got wind of what had happened in the municipality, Anand municipality. It said, now, uh, it seems like you have a problem. Uh, you are, ma the, 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 the mother of the children seemed to be uh, 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 an Indian and not uh, your wife. So, therefore, give us, get us something. John Ballas was his name. He approached uh, the, uh, the high court at uh, uh, Gujarat. He said, my, uh, my wife and uh, uh, I, we could not have a child. She had uh, some kind of infection in her uh, uh, ovaries. So therefore, uterus, there was a problem. We have uh, commissioned this person. So therefore, it must be changed. Now, what had happened was the Indian Evidence Act, many of you have uh, probably been, if you are there in the third year or fourth year, you must have gone through the Indian Evidence Act. There is a section which talks about uh, presumptions. And a student of law will know any child born to a, a woman uh, within 240 days of marriage, uh, when the marriage is intact, shall be the, the conclusive presumption is that the man is the father for the child. So therefore, if there was a, this woman that was married, who had a husband in Gujarat, 
if she delivers a child and the marriage is intact, the law conclusively presumes the husband to be the, uh, the ch parent of the child, not a German who has arrived. That's a dangerous presumption there. So there, therefore, there was a presumption which was conclusive, but then the truth was that somebody else was the parent. So the, the marriage had not been dissolved. So, but then again, uh, we, uh, the Indian the registration of marriage, death and uh, uh, death, uh, registration of death and uh, birth and death act says the child born shall be the the child which is uh, the, uh, the the born through the loins. A child that is born through the loins is the, this child only. That is how the act itself says. There is quite a problem in the matter case it came. No, we dismiss it. It is not possible to treat this person and this person as a mother. The matter went to Supreme Court. The Supreme Court asked the question, what do we do with the Indian Evidence Act? What do we do with the Registration Act? What do we do with a child which has been born uh, through uh, legislation which is still not in place? They said, now, we direct that the children will be treated as Indian citizens. The mother, and, uh, the mother will be the same mother, that she gives uh, uh, adoption uh, to these persons and uh, CARA, the uh, child adoption agency, will approve of this. Then we'll enter that in the passport, let that be sent. The whole lot of confusion through orders, which is every bit of line in every line is illegal. The court was, the Supreme Court is saying something of what could not have been done unless the, the Su Supreme Court had some powers under Article 142 to say whatever it states is law. If it, if, you, if it says I am a woman, I am a woman by the Supreme Court. If it says I am a man, I am a man. That's how the Supreme Court can make and unmake things. So therefore, we had a legal inadequacy in a situation where uh, by a fate of the Supreme Court, it was able to pass an order. The problem was that we have situations, similar thing arriving of a German couple, we have, uh, we have a Japanese couple, uh, couple arriving here. They commissioned the uh, uh, birth of a child through a surrogate mother. While she was uh, pregnant, uh, uh, she became pregnant, the, uh, she was to deliver a child. The Japanese couple in Japan divorced. The woman said, I don't want the child. The man didn't know what, he had to come to India. Uh, then uh, she couldn't bring his wife. The wife had divorced him by that time. He brought his uh, uh, mother, an old mother. He said, now, the court said, now, uh, how can we now allow for this child to go with you? There is no mother. Mother is diverse. Who do we record as the mother? The issue, the Supreme Court resolved it by saying, yes, the grandmother will be the guardian. The father will be also the guardian. The mother and grandmother will be the guardians, and they'll take the child. They took the child to Japan. And what Japan did, I don't know. But Japan does not allow for surrogacy at all. A, a case from USA where... Nevada allows for surrogacy. They took the child. They had the names recorded, Japanese parents recorded. Minshu is the case. Re Minshu, look at 2007 from the Supreme Court, Japan. Here was a case where the commissioning parents were Japanese couple. They, uh, the law of uh, Nevada allowed for registration of the uh, actual couples uh, to uh, adopt, have adopted, uh, have a child through surrogacy. But when they took the child, Japan Supreme Court said, our country does not recognize, send back the child to Nevada. The mother was not prepared to claim. The child has, was sent back to USA and it is now probably in some home. Japan does not recognize, Russia uh, 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 does not recognize. You have doctors here who are prepared to make their money and then get them impregnated, uh, 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 deliver children. No law there. No doctor is prepared to apply an ethical standard of whether it is possible or not. Look at again who is the oldest mother in India. Look at, uh, uh, go through the uh, Google search and see. There is uh, the, uh, a Haryan V woman, uh, eight, uh, 74 years old. A man, a uh, macro, uh, uh, with, uh, wears a turban, has on, his, uh, has on his face nothing except a large mustache. His face is all small. He has a large mustache. He is a male, he has to have a large mustache. He is a male, he needs to have a son. He is a male, he is a, a, a person with authority, he needs to have a man afford to take, go through the ignominy of adopting a child. Come what may, my wife is 74 to conduct uh, IVF procedure on such a woman. Gave her all enzymes and things and then made a pregnant, delivered of a child. And the child, the photograph, if you look at that, the most pathetic photograph, a young child of about eight or nine months uh, the uh, uh, lady lying down with uh, uh, a yeah, sagging teeth, 
the child trying to suckle something. The most heart-wrenching photograph you can see if you look into the, uh, the in a image. So here is again a doctor who is not prepared to see whether it is appropriate that I impregnate a woman at that age. Here is a doctor uh, in uh, uh, Gujarat who is not prepared to see if I now deliver the child, can this child go to some country and then get assimilated there? Uh, not the question with the, which are being asked. So therefore, we have in the absence of situation, while a sex worker working in a place where you have an enactment that says it's illegal to do that, why? It's, a, it's not for a woman a matter of mere a pleasurable act. She is now made to do her seller body to make her money. What else is happening in surrogacy? Now we talk about commercial element will not be there. But then if countries in some of even the most developing countries, most developed countries, probably Japan or Germany, or in some states in USA, they have not allowed for surrogacy. We are still now talking about India can produce and therefore we'll have children. In fact, it so happened uh, that uh, on a visit to uh, a country in uh, uh, France, uh, I saw there were so many uh, children there. Uh, 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 there were so many persons there also not begging, but uh, making a dignified manner of uh, begging all the same. So uh, for me, I was wondering, uh, because from Pondicherry, from where I came, the children used to be regularly transported to Switzerland and France. I wanted to therefore see what is happening on a visit to France. Where are these children getting uh, 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 drawn? Mail carried a, uh, 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 the London Mail carried a story that the children who are taken from India are being administered. They are used as guinea pigs and administered medicines to see whether the medicines operate properly or not. That was Lakshmi Pandey in 1984 case. From there, it gave uh, birth to several decisions. What shall be the appropriate criterion for making an inter-country adoption? We don't have a law yet. We are still looking for some uh, going to areas. We don't have a law and therefore the doctors will behave the way they want. We don't have a law appropriately. We don't therefore have the judges who can deliver judgment which is appropriate. We will have to be going through the Supreme Court route to secure something. Then it is a meaningless thing. We need, if sex worker is, uh, we uh, ban that for, we don't see that as merely a, a pleasurable act of two uh, adults, but it is demeaning, demeaning and in, uh, indig uh, to a dignity of woman. How do we see this as a dignified act of a person who is renting a room, not because she wants to do it, because her husband wants it. Let us be very real about it. There are not too many persons who can offer themselves, I'm prepared to bury your child. Who will do that? That is such a precious act. A person wouldn't want that. A woman, I would like to believe so. A woman cannot simply say, now I'll bury anybody's child. That will not be done. In fact, it's a demeaning thing to be even talking about it. It's so solemn an act between a, a man and a woman who share uh, their intimacy. It, it, it happens in all civilized countries, whatever you talk about, the free, the, 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 the free approach of man and woman relationship. When it comes even to, because it's a matter of history, therefore quote the name. Tiger Woods can, for all, for all that, you can be, it's, it, you could be living in a country where they allow for extramarital, they would uh, allow for all kind of relationships. But if it was extramarital, then you will have your wife walking out. Institution of marriage is probably the oldest institution which has survived through several, on, uh, for several centuries. It will not go. That act, that intimacy, that procreation is so sacred in every community, be it a tribal community, be it in so-called developed countries, they are all very uh, solemn. We are now, therefore, not having enough laws or laws which are the inadequacy of laws which is creating a problem. Again, uh, th there are issues where when we talk about uh, after life, do we, d does a woman uh, 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 have the uh, d uh, right to decide when she will uh, terminate? Probably uh, a case, uh, it says medical termination of a pregnancy act allows for termination of pregnancy uh, which, who is a victim of rape. A uh, person where uh, the child uh, is uh, in some way congenitally so seriously uh, troubled that if it is born, it is going to carry so serious a problem that you terminate. There are some exceptions which are given. There was a case where a young girl and a man, they uh, uh, eloped. Krishnan was his name. And uh, they, uh, she was carrying, she was, uh, uh, she, she was in the 23rd week of pregnancy. The parent did not want, they did not think that girl who was only 16 years old could be uh, marrying to a person. They applied for termination of pregnancy. 
They wanted the pregnancy to be terminated. The girl said, no, I'm not going to terminate. So the matter came to the uh, court. One of the most judgments ever by Justice N. Sinuas and another is, was quoted again. That was a case where the girl was brought to court. They asked, uh, would you go with, I'm not going to ask a question whether you'd go with that man because he was still young. You have gotten, uh, you, uh, you have got, no sir, we have gone through a, a form of marriage. How old are you? He said, um, I'm 16 years old. How did you get married? The, the Prevention of Child, Child Marriage Act prohibits this kind of marriage. Why did you do this? But then uh, your parents don't want it. No, but I want this child. So therefore the, the, the issue was, could you allow for a, a parent who is still a minor, a husband who is, whose marriage is still suspect, do you allow the retention of this child or do you terminate? That was the issue. They said here was the autonomy, the right to uh, decide, the right to decide on what a person wants to have. The autonomy for a parent is so important that you will not dilute it easily. And if she wants to retain the fetus and wants to take the child to full term and then bear it and deliver it, she will have it. That was M. Sinoasin's view. Where a person was uh, seen and known to be in some ways conservative, he went one step more. It's not being conservative or not conservative or liberal. It's a case of a woman's autonomy in herself. Whether she wants a child or not is so important. I don't right now worry whether there was a marriage or not. She will have the child. It required a court's intervention to do, but otherwise by itself there was law was not very favorable. Look at a very strange situation. I had occasion to write on that. In Chandigarh was a, a, a mentally deranged girl, she was a mentally retarded girl, she was 19 years. There was an ayah who, was, um, who had allowed for the guard of the place, not G-O-D, he was a G-U-A-R-D, who was to guard the inmates. And this ayah received some money and allowed this person to have sex with that woman. She, uh, she became pregnant. The Chandigarh administration came to us, sought for termination of pregnancy. A very sensitive judge is said, now let us go through an examination of this person. We call that, uh, that girl to court. In, in the chamber, uh, uh, we asked her, uh, do you know what's happening in you? Uh, she touched her, herself and said, you are asking about me? He said, uh, in, in a, uh, Hindi, said, yes, uh, there is a child growing in you. Do you want it? Uh, yes, I want. Uh, and then, why would you want? Who, who got the child for you? Uh, I don't know. Uh, do, uh, the, the child, you think it's always growing here or do you take it? I don't know. Child can be also taken from other places. She didn't know a child is always uh, conceived and then she didn't understand. Our level of understanding was not even that. And then uh, she said, uh, who did this to you? The, you, do you? Do you know? No. She put her head down. Uh, do you know this person? Gave the name of the person. I said, do you know this person? She kept quiet. What did he do? Dirty boy. That's all she said and then looked differently. So uh, my brother judge thought it was uh, too tough. Look at this girl who doesn't know what pregnancy is, does not know a child is conceived in a womb and it is born. So therefore we'll direct this, this person who is already mentally retarded. She was a victim of rape. Victim of rape uh, would, uh, that is uh, given under me medical termination of pregnancy, the act itself as a justifi justifiable ground for a, a termination. Therefore we'll order termination. There was a young lawyer, this uh, one, Tanu Bedi. She's young, just as young, probably a few more years uh, ahead of you. She was so sensitive. She, she thought the child, this woman wants a child. She, what do you want to do? She says, it's a, like a doll, I'll play with it. She thinks what is there inside is a doll to play with. That is good enough reason. That should survive. Don't decide whether she understands pregnancy. Don't decide that she was a victim of rape. Don't decide if she wants it, she will have it. She went and made a mention because we had directed termination of pregnancy to take place on Monday. She made a mention before the chief justice there on Sunday morning. It was stayed. Ultimately, an order came to be passed. That, that, that is uh, Such, Sucheta uh, versus uh, Chandigarh administration case, where they decided about when do you allow for a surrogate decision to be taken by somebody? When do you allow for the autonomy to take over? What level of understanding is necessary? Is mentally retarded person a person who is incapable of bearing a child? These were the questions which were addressed and answers made. 
Now look at everything. At every one of these occasions, the legislation does not give the uh, correct answer. We need to be looking for judicial intervention somewhere and secure something. But they are very crucial issues. Uh, what is autonomy? So therefore, um, when we see such situations, we need a larger uh, sure for people to understand, for doctors to approach uh, what to do. We need legislations in place. And that can take place only when there is an informed debate on what is necessary to be done. Look at again a, a situation of um, how serious could be a uh, matter in, a, in the person's life. If a person is ill uh, or in a case where uh, uh, two children are there, uh, bo both uh, one child has a very serious problem, they are conjoined twins, they are connected together at their heads. Allowing these uh, two children to grow, they may die shortly. But if you make a surgery and take one child away, there is a chance that one child sur survives and another child dies. At the time of surgery itself, one child will die. Only because there can be two heads together, body is one. So only one can uh, survive, one has to be cut off. The issue is in cases of conjoined twins. Can you cut a child to make one child survive and take another child go away? Now, this was a point which is taken before a court. Do we cut this child and then make this possible? They said, now, it doesn't seem fair. Uh, that uh, it should be done. But then if one child can survive, probably you should allow it to go. A case came like this from Ranchi in India and brought to the Supreme Court. Probably a time when we could have taken some decision of what would happen if you want to keep at least one person alive without uh, putting both of them at risk. That was a case where uh, uh, the, uh, the mother uh, was uh, uh, a Muslim of a very poor family. The, uh, she wanted both the children. She didn't want to leave them. How do I leave what Allah has given to me? How do I ever think it is not worth it? I will bore them uh, both. If he would take on one day, I will let him go on that day, not before that time. The Supreme Court has caught in a bind, didn't know what to do. Allow for a child. There are examples where one child could be allowed to survive and another to be lost. Then they, uh, uh, then they said, we can't take a decision of what the parent is not prepared, be so emphatic about. So it's not even a situation where we are in doubt. It's a situation where a mother wants to keep them both willy-nilly. It happens in V.K. Arvirao, a famous economist. Uh, he was asking, uh, you, there is, uh, why would you, uh, you uh, everything is waiting for you in the world in the West. Why are you coming to India? What do you think you are going to be doing in India? V.K. Arvirao said, the same way as a mother feels the closest to a child which is a weakling, which is uh, sick, uh, and believes that the uh, a healthy child will grow by itself. I want a country to survive. My country is sick. I would therefore come back to India. The mother was something like that. Mother, for her, the sick child is the most precious child. Why would I give it up? So the Supreme Court ultimately dealt with the decision last year in 2012 and said, government will pay 14,000, uh, 5,000 rupees. She was in poverty. All she wanted is give us, give us milk. Give my, let me give milk to my children. That's all I need. Please help me with it sensitive issues of what comes to court, of what we deal, how we deal with it during time, it's probably something uh, we'll have to see. In another area of life, medical care, what we should do, uh, we have uh, 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 some, some cases, all that you see uh, in cigarette packs is uh, injury, uh, uh, cigarette smoking is injurious to health. Now these days also lungs, blackened lungs is also there in all this. Uh, the, the, the litigation now sometime back, probably last week you must have seen, a lady in USA wins 3.2 billions uh, for, uh, in a tobacco litigation where the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the case was uh, of a, a, a wife losing her husband, 35 years old, due to cancer by smoking. Sue's the Sue company. Now the same thing was done by Clinton administration. By these all you companies putting the money there, so much money advertising and allowing people to smoke, we are now pushing so much, we are forced to pay so much. You give us now therefore $400 billion against the tobacco industry. The government filing a suit against them. The first suit was only, I have smoked and uh, uh, I've, I've gone into suffering. There was, didn't, the smoking is injurious, did not come in a day. 
uh, the smoking was at one time like you would have seen those uh, Shivaji Ganesha's movies. Many of you are still young. Uh, the Shivaji Ganesha walks there with a, this thing. He has to have a cigarette in his hand and then puff it off there like that and then you do like that and then let the smoke go. The, uh, smoking was fashion at some point of time. It's, uh, it's cool. So it's, uh, that was how it was. And then uh, they've, uh, in USA the advertisements uh, were doctors prefer camel cigarettes. Doctors prefer, they wanted to give it, doctors are cool, doctors know health issues and they, they were cool. So therefore it required a lot of research before they said a sure nexus between cancer and smoking, it's so injurious. And the, all the litigations initially we started, I, I, I was lured by these advertisements, I smoked, I have got cancer. The uh, answer by the tobacco industry was, you knew it was injurious, volunty not fit injuria. You read it? in uh, uh, thoughts and therefore you voluntarily uh, uh, embrace uh, something which is bad and therefore you'll have to take it. The cases were all getting dismissed here, there. Then there was a person, a prisoner who had an uh, interesting case in USA. He said, my fellow prisoner keeps smoking, I have now got cancer, I am not guilty, I did not smoke, I was a passive smoker. The first major uh, uh, decision in USA was at the instance of Passive Smokers Association who won a litigation against the tobacco industry. They said, passive smoking is bad. Now, he p picked up some person there in, uh, uh, in Kerala, uh, Kerala uh, uh, Narayan Kurup, said now, smoking in public places must be stopped. There was no legislation there. Same way now, it was probably Rajasthan and Gujarat who were the first states who said now, uh, we will not allow for smoking in public. And came, there were decisions of the Supreme Court which said now, it's injurious not merely to you, to others as well. Passive smoking when it was seen to be seriously and dangerous. So therefore it went on, tobacco is bad, then tobacco is bad, then chew tobacco, how is it done? Then therefore tobacco chewing, how it is bad and what can be done? There were funny decisions there uh, where they said uh, tobacco in a case which is still before the Supreme Court is Gutka Pan is in some case uh, decided it cannot be sold, it cannot be advertised. But then it was a powerful lobby, tobacco lobby is a very powerful lobby. You'll find also the same way the liquor lobby is a powerful lobby. You'll have any kind of advertisements. And they had a law saying, don't, you can't advertise products. products. Now you see then uh, Smirnoff CDs from 1856. Smir 18, there was nothing like a CD in 1856. CD is a new creation. The advertisement, the surrogate advertisements, when they say you don't uh, advertise your uh, products, uh, liquor products, they, they call it uh, uh, a person, uh, you will do everything else. Like beer is bad, then you say beer shampoo, you give the same brand will also be there available for you uh, if, uh, elsewhere. So therefore, what is banned, what is stopped somewhere comes through in some other way. It keeps happening, that is what we need to know. Um, there was, um, uh, we have, uh, uh, that if there is no legislation and we are still able to get some decisions, it's because of innovativeness of lawyers who can produce things which can create a debate and then make, uh, take things forward. There was again, not merely in, uh, during life, uh, uh, what beyond life, what is so precious was brought in a case of uh, whether a dead body is property or not. Is dead body a property? It was, uh, it was about a person who was uh, uh, making uh, some thefts of uh, art, uh, um, uh, dead bodies uh, and then uh, he was selling them to surgeons because in USA, UK at some point of time, a person who was uh, a student of medicine needs to know how these things are. So uh, the, uh, the Department of Surgeons, they had a case against this man who had stolen uh, things. He admitted to guilt, uh, he admitted to stealing, but he said it is not actionable because there is no property. Property alone can be stolen because it's a dead, dead body, there is no uh, uh, theft. So uh, they were saying, what is this now, dead body? Because in some decision they said dead body, body is not uh, property. Body, only if it is living you can do something. A body by itself is not a property was the decision of House of Lords. And then they said, it is body is not property. The curious thing what had happened was, Observer, which was a British magazine, they carried a story. This man was not merely selling, he also creates them as exhibits. He says, what beautiful structure is the body. He was keeping them, dead bodies there as exhibits somewhere for people to go and see. So therefore you want to see a dead man there smiling or something like that with nothing there, with only the dentures seem like smiling. 
Therefore, you, you are saying now, look at the, the smile of a dead body, beautiful, with all that their quotes there. So there was something artistic about what he was trying to exhibit. That was the case which was done. So the, the, uh, the case was therefore taking it. Where do we do if it is dead body is not a property? Is, uh, if he is doing it in only to see that he is exhibiting them, he has an artistic value in what he is taking. Quote, the, quote. Now, he was, uh, he, this uh, observer is trying to deflect the jury. Uh, they, he, they want to create an impression as though this man is uh, stealing in order to create an art. So you must be committed for contempt. So they discharged the contempt action, found the property. Dead body could also be property if it was uh, stolen. And then they said, commit him for theft. Discharged observer said, freedom of expression entitles any person to say anything. That is how the case ultimately got concluded. So therefore, um, in a case of a dead body, uh, what is there? Probably the most sensitive ju judgment was uh, by Justice uh, uh, Ram Subramaniam at a bench where it was Setu Raja, a, 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 a worker, a tea worker, died in Malaysia. His, he was so poor, his father could not bring the dead body to, to, uh, to India. So he, he petitioned to the court, my, my boy is dead, his dead body is there in, uh, in the... Uh, it recognizes dignity not merely in birth, it recognizes uh, dignity in death. Dignity in death is probably is also the reason why they were promoting a cause for uh, a case for euthanasia. Do we allow for a person to suffer if a person cannot uh, does not know that whether he breathes or not, whether he, if he has to be fed? Do we allow for the person to take a decision to die or not? Should he not have dignity in death? Sethu Raja or Madras High Court said that dignity in death must extend to such a level that a father must have a right to see his body, his son's body, that the state owes to that father to secure the body from there, incur the expenses and bring the dead body, no matter if the, child, the, the boy is going to be buried or cremated immediately. They recognize a, a judicial uh, innovation again it was when it provided for how to treat the dead body. Not merely dead bodies, there was also a case where a person was dead in Vijayan's case, and O.P. Vijayan was a Kerala uh, popular author, his, there was a very curious turn of events. The, uh, the person uh, died, uh, his ashes were there, and uh, the property Vijayan had given to uh, in a view. So he said, now he chooses me, the wife and daughter, son will not take uh, the ashes, I will take the ashes. All he wanted was ashes. The ashes he wanted, the wife and son said, that my husband's ashes will not be taken. They, could, they, they were all prepared to go up to the stage of cremating, uh, cremating him. But beyond that, whether ashes is something which owns, belongs to some person, the court was not prepared to go that far. The Supreme Court said anyway, the, the uh, Delhi High Court said there was a mediation which worked between them. That some one will immerse it on one day, another will immerse it on another day. Both of them will carry it on and immerse it. So therefore, uh, we recognize at all times, uh, at life, before life, during life, of how the value of the life is. And beyond life, what else can still be property? Can, is there a dignity in death? Is there, a digni is there something which is still possible for a person to own and do things? All come through um, uh, court, uh, court and court litigations. What do we make relevance? How do we make relevance of all these things in our lives as, as students? For me, the students, um, uh, uh, our activity must be to see at least in some areas of doubt we need to discuss them and that can happen only in campuses. Uh, you, let us, uh, all the lawmakers of what we say, the law in its infinite wisdom, the infinite wisdom of what we attribute to law through the legislators would happen if legislators take the business seriously. We have come through tough times, or probably we look forward to better times. We have come through times when we did no legislative exercise at all. It was a pathetic time of only din in the, bar, in the houses. But then if they must, we must bring some dignity to that, we need at all times a preparation of something which will make it worthwhile. Where will it come from? Where do you think the intelligent, intelligent response of a civil society going to emerge? It can happen only in campuses. Campus is a person who are in daily, from morning through evening, touching law books, keeping them, opening them, making notes. It's you who can make a difference. The fresh idea of so many things where we are still now uh, wondering uh, where to, how to take a, a route, how to take a direction. It could be the law campuses which should do that. 
of so many decisions of what the courts take or how they're going to be implemented at various times, that has to be again taken by law colleges and students who will be able to relate to people, take up issues and discuss. See, it may seem ridiculous. Do you stop a small, a small type person going somewhere and then discuss him and say, do you think termination of pregnancy, teenage pregnancy, is it proper or not? Who has a right to decide on a pregnancy? Does a doctor require to communicate with some person to terminate pregnancy if there is a teenager? Right to abort, does that person, do we recognize the autonomy for a woman to decide? Who decides an issue of what would happen whether a child should be in a particular color or not? Should the, the doctors decide to do anything or what is not appropriate ethically? Do you allow for those kind of situations to exist? Do you allow for clinical trials to happen? Again, one, another area of what is happening, uh, patent law has gone through an important change where uh, uh, till very recently it was only uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the regime which promoted this was only a process patent in, uh, from the, in the WTA. Many countries, the advanced countries, they said now product patents must be recognized because through reverse engineering, India and other countries which have a large pool of scientists who are smart and clever, they're able to get back and then say how these various components are brought. They therefore produce something else, by uh, give it another name, but they've gone through all the research of what we have done, they, uh, they are trying to exploit. So therefore, at some point of time, they decided product must also be patented, uh, allows for 20 years. So within 20 years, something must be done. Uh, beyond that 20 year period, the, the patent will lose. So much of expenditure would go in that, cancer uh, medicines and uh, patenting, and how these things can help in a big way, uh, what would, uh, how do we protect indigenous industry, uh, the generic uh, uh, in industries which produce cheap medicines and make it available for Africa and other countries where India has a large pool of researchers and uh, smart people. Uh, do we allow for these things to go or not? To what extent we allow for protection of uh, uh, imitations? What is possible? These are again areas of consideration which uh, intelligent uh, groups of persons must discuss and find out how in India, how do we uh, make possible uh, a generic industry to grow without offending the uh, uh, patent regime which protects product patents as well. What is, uh, what is, get used to new concepts like evergreening, uh, how uh, to, not to approve the evergreening, uh, where by the end of 20th year, you just make some tweak here, there, somewhere, make it appear as though you are a new product, and then secure another patent for 20 years. These are concepts which we need to know. Students must therefore understand the patent law from what is so important to us, which is going to happen in the field of uh, 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 medicine, because pharmaceutical patents are the most potent patents. That what, that's what assures health industry, a very big investment and opportunity. And if India is seen as an important player because we are able to supply goods to all other countries, and we, therefore to that extent we are a major contributor to the world's welfare itself. And you must all have a role to play and you need therefore to know how patent law it becomes relevant and how do we understand this better. So from before birth, uh, at life and beyond, and we have so much reasons to be very actively involved and uh, then make possible an understanding which is appropriate. Uh, just a discussion somewhere, reading here, there will not help. In our curriculum, wherever we see there is an opportunity to make better for uh, human welfare and what is going to be our contribution. What is the area where laws do not exist? Therefore. Can we make a model law on something, model, model surrogate law? Or there is already something which is, in, which is in a bill stage. Do we have something actively to contribute to it? Do that. So therefore, in our campuses, uh, I'm so glad as I've come here to see, uh, it's just not the youth which uh, inspires me. Uh, it's the institution, the edifice which inspires me. Uh, I've gone through an institution at that time, it was still in uh, Aspects uh, Shed uh, where I studied. But I know what a beautiful building means. And what you have got now is a great opportunity. And these opportunities uh, did not at all times exist for all types of people. And we have an institution where it's headed by persons who have values uh, as the most important thing. Uh, uh, ethical values, uh, religion and values. See, uh, it's like a blade. It can cut or shave. It depends on the way you use it. Uh, religion is used uh, in a wrong way probably. 
for strong polit small political reasons. See religion as something which makes possible for evolu uh, an involvement of a soul uh, to higher plane and to see a beautiful harmony amongst all religions. That's what institutions like this can build. See, just not being sectarian, that you allow for all thoughts to come. That was how I I uh, our country uh, prospered. The Vasudaiva Kudumbam of what we are talking about, what our ancestors are saying, or Ekam Sat of what they were saying, they, they were all too, not in a sectarian sense at all. It is my religion, my religion alone, not that. Institution which carries to come in there in the stream. Identifying the greatness of what values this great country bore. And how do we make these students work to contribute back to the society? Lawyers make long time, uh, take a, may take uh, some time to prosper in the initial page. But the in, immediately after that, yes, Arish Salve makes more money than Amitabh Bachchan could do. So therefore, it's one day fee could be about somewhere close to 24 lakhs. Amitabh Bachchan with all his histrionics cannot be, uh, will not be able to do that on a day. Nor could Shah Rukh Khan do. The, uh, the, 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 uh, most affluent people in India, I would like to believe, are lawyers at some point of time. So therefore, you're all, I see in you, those persons oh, who are capable, they have the potential to grow very big. But then all that must come back to society in some way. It's just not making money. Make your money in abundance, but then give back to society in reasonably good amount. And that is possible if our minds are tuned to something that you're capable of giving back in a very big way. That is that self-belief which will make it happen. So friends, um, it's been my pleasure to uh, initiate uh, what I thought was an important uh, issue for everyone. So therefore, um, uh, this I would believe uh, to be a starting point for uh, so many more uh, important uh, discussions that you'll undertake. See uh, that law as something which will make life important, the same way as medicine to improve med uh, health, law to improve health along with medicine. So that, I believe, will happen if you understand that marriage of law and medicine is beautifully possible. Thank you very much. Take some food. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, this is uh, to uh, conclude uh, what I have said. Uh, if I have said something which you contest, please do so. Uh, if you think you will affirm, I'll take it as earned. Uh, if you have some new uh, uh, understanding to say, yes. If you have uh, something which I had missed out, which I shouldn't have said, obviously I had missed out quite a lot. Uh, of a book of what I wrote, I compiled in about 690 pages with footnoting which is equally important. It could have been just as well 2,500 pages. So, but then uh, we have uh, so many ideas, it's only introducing something. So I invite uh, anyone of you to ask any question. Uh, I assure you uh, that I will not give long answers. Yes, yes. give your name, uh, your, uh, your uh, class of what you're studying. Uh, make only a question, don't make a speech. I take that to be my privilege. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, this is on patent. Your engagement. name? Sri Nandan, Your Honor. I'm Sri in Nandan. the fourth year of VALLB. Yeah. So it's on patents, the patents that we were talking about. So we have a regime in which, uh, though process patent is there, the researchers are not being helped much after the Novartis came, in, came into being. So why not create a state-backed generic drug which will help the povertyized people, while the people who are well, uh, who have money, they could buy the other drugs which are made by the Novartis and other huge companies. Is it possible to make such laws? Yes. Uh, by, uh, we must understand uh, the several uh, meetings took place at the international level uh, where innovation, probably the country which talked about invention and rewarding an invention, please sit down, uh, rewarding an invention. In 1776 in the US Constitution, which runs to only one and a half pages, it makes a reference to rewarding patent. When no other country you would even thought of rewarding a patent, a person who makes an invention. You will know a, dis a difference between a discovery and invention. I'm not making that, now an exposition on that. If we know invention, an invention for us, at all times, we protected inventions in a different way. Uh, we allowed, if in the field of medicine, for instance, it was always uh, a family secret going from one to another. What we did not do through specific protective regimes through law, 
we allowed it to happen in a very uh, uh, insulated way of allowing for family secrets in the manner of manufacture of medicines. You will still know. Uh, they only know. They can make something. They would not give that. That secret was recognized, respected. They were not saying, you know this, why don't you give it to every term, everyone? They all respected even without understanding the patent law. What U.S. had to say in 1776 is how we always knew that a person who invents is a person who must be respected. He is entitled to keep that secret. That was one thing. Now, a state, why will not the state do? We are talking about a product patent. What 2005 amendment came was the recognition of a product patent. There is a difference between a product patent and a process patent. If in a medicine like, say, Saridon, uh, Saridon contains some chemicals, what these combinations are, how, how much of grams, how much of milligrams, how do they combinate in which, uh, in which proportion, all that is a manner of pro procedure of what is to be done, what is a, how do you change, how, how much time you allow for uh, uh, boiling it, how do you solidify it, all this could be a matter of process. The process which takes a shape, then a product which is there which comes out ultimately, like, let us uh, take it, it's given a name, Saridon. Twenty years and beyond, it loses the patent value. Everyone can look at it and then say they can do it. A product regime, a process which was how to do it was always what was protected. Ultimate product, if, we, if I now take it from the product, I'm merely illustrating, if I go back and say, how, how much component is there, how much, it may not have been under the same combination, what was added first, what was heated first, uh, they could be different. So therefore you can make a reverse engineering and manufacture something which is protected. This was also stopped from 2005 because developed countries were saying that these are all developing countries who have the resources, they're copying everything, we, they, it's a great disincentive. Now in Novartis was a case, Novartis case was an important case, where uh, a, a, a beta crystalline form of some medicine, uh, which was meant for cancer drug, it was costing for a month's dosage was 2,30,000 rupees. Here was an Indian company which made it possible for the same manufacturer to be, uh, for, one, for one month consumption, it was something probably 6,000 rupees or 8,000 rupees. The challenge was product regime had already come, how have they made it? The question was, that they first challenged the uh, amendment which was made and in law, section uh, 3D, and then uh, that, was, that failed. In the Supreme Court, the, uh, it is a beautiful judgment which has been written. They have said an inventive step is some step which must give a kind of a oh, wow effect. All of you understand, you are all cool, young. Therefore, the invention is something which takes you to a, a thing which was not anticipated. A non-anticipatory action is what is an, uh, the thing. It's patent law does, uh, protects not merely, the state can manufacture what an individual can't do, the state will do. No, it's not like that. Nobody can do. But then, uh, if, uh, why can we not make it uh, uh, relevant? Then we need to improve research. We need our own clinical trials where persons are prepared to offer uh, themselves as uh, uh, specimens to work. Government, why will they not do? The government's resources are not well tuned for that kind of a research. Ultimately, it is a person, the individual initiative which works. We have uh, discarded at over a period of time, government's function will be in the matter of wherever it is, health, national security, and uh, 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 education. Beyond this, that it shall uh, also set up labs to manufacture and things. It's the pit initiative of in the kind of uh, and its place. So therefore, um, I would still think the state depends. If the state it, it, it can simply copy anything, it does not allow for that. No, your lordship. I mean, state back distribution of generic drugs to poverty people and not manufacture. They were equitable distribution. Uh, which, which shall not go to everyone manufactures only because there is a profit. Let us understand something. For some time in the past, in 30, 40s and 50s, no, post-constitution, uh, the Nehru regime, I'm not talking politics, but I'm merely saying, uh, making money was seen as something very silly, uh, uh, that it is, uh, is anti-people. Uh, you need to be at all times, if you wear a kurta and a jolna pai and then walk, uh, you are fashionable at some point of time. That uh, seemed like that. For me, it is not the dress, it's in mind. So therefore, uh, equitable distribution for government to take, Medicare must therefore obtain 
the primacy of its uh, a country's uh, behavior. Uh, but then uh, I would still think uh, the state to do is the manufacturing, if he invents, if they, the invent, invention is again so costly now, labs, setting up labs are so costly, uh, it's only uh, companies which are prepared to invest a lot of money in research, R&D, uh, which can thrive. Government does not have the time or resource to put that kind of money. If a manufacturer manufacture things, the government to take over and do things. Wherever the government comes, uh, there is always some element of injustice somewhere going. Uh, we must move towards uh, a recognition of individual worth, uh, a community's civic response, which is uh, truly uh, people-centered, and government, which is very limited, all it does to borrow uh, a phrase of what the Prime Minister used, th th there shall be interested in governance, less governed, more governance. So therefore, you don't, you don't ask for more government there in all these sectors of distribution. But we must uh, put them to where they belong and take over administrators, manufacturers, do what is reasonably possible through law, law application. Your Lordship. Will allow it to take it from somebody else? Yes, will that be all right? Uh, is there a person there from there who has, uh, do you want to ask? No. Then I'll take it from a person who's nearby. Just be seated for a minute. I'll take it from the lady. Uh, good morning, Your Lordship. I'm Manasa, a fourth year law student. I have two questions. Firstly, whether the DNA test can rebut the conclusive proof under Section 112 of the Evidence Act. And secondly, uh, there are two prenatal diagnosis, uh, prenatal DNA diagnosis that can be done. One is the invasive method and other is the non-invasive method. Now the invasive method, there are high chances of miscarriage being done. Uh, the doctors obviously know the uh, um, consequences of an invasive DNA test. Now uh, upon knowing the consequences, if the doctor conducts an invasive prenatal DNA test and causes miscarriage, will that be categorized as medical negligence? Yes. Uh, the, the, the first question of uh, uh, the Present, uh, presumptions. Uh, Sharda versus Dharampal is probably the most leading decision on this. Uh, they have said that presumption in law is such that uh, it is to um, satisfy a larger public interest and a public policy. Uh, if uh, a man and a woman live together and a child is born, uh, the presumption must be carried to its full weight and then uh, you should allow for uh, the presumption to apply, you will not allow for a DNA. DNA is, uh, the court will not order uh, a, a statutory presumption of what comes to be easily dislocated by exposing a person to do something. Sharda then therefore says, and later decisions which follow, say this, that DNA will, the court will not order to displace a statutory presumption merely because it has the power to do so. When will it do? It will do in case of very strong evidence regarding non-access. There must be a stage where a person, I did a case, which is a reported case, of a woman and ma man and a woman fighting a case, the, the woman seeking for restitution of conjugal rights, the man seeking for divorce. And uh, the, 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 they were, when the case was pending, any case pending is there for three years and more. So the, the woman uh, uh, bore a child, she became pregnant and bore a child and gave birth to a child. The man immediately said, now we have been fighting a divorce, now the, div the claim for maintenance of what she is making must be dismissed. She has uh, been unchaste. So uh, there is already a presumption. Then he was saying, uh, we, are, we are fighting uh, our courts, what, what do we do? Therefore was, uh, is it possible, do we still draw a presumption or when do we order a test to be done? Uh, the decision by the uh, Madras High Court at the time, it is uh, Meenakshi versus uh, Rajagopal Chetiyar. In that decision, they said, proof of non-access must be such. In that case, the lady gave evidence to effect that even when the case was pending, he said, now let us talk peace. And then he came home. On that day, he had an access to me. So any kind of a thing is possible. An access is so, uh, if a man uh, uh, decides to do that, it's unfortunately, uh, uh, the, it can take it to an, another stage. Therefore, court will not order DNA uh, to displace a one, uh, one, uh, 112, 113 presumptions. But then uh, to the next question of an invasive procedure of what would happen if it is medical negligence or not. Uh, medical negligence, uh, it, it has three different meanings. 
uh, under the Consumer Protection Act, you will notice, uh, surprisingly, from the year 1950 to 1967, there is not one single case against a doctor. The Supreme Court reports the first case in the year 1967. Till that time, there is not a case. Maybe it's 66. Doctors were seen as demigods. Doctor, ayya, ningada. So you'll find that is how it is, probably in Nayakan picture. I'll understand everything from through pictures only. I like pictures. I have not a problem. So therefore, uh, there is a doctor who wouldn't do. Then you'll force him. Now do that. Then you'll do the child breathes. Then the, 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 mother, the mother will come. The child is safe. So uh, there are hero pats that person, calls the doctor, pats him and says, so therefore, that is how a person was seen. So uh, the doctors were seen like that. So they were never taken uh, into court right away for negligence. A doctor is not a person who guarantees uh, life against death. A doctor aids the process of a reasonable health during life, which is possible. So therefore, unless uh, then uh, uh, negligence of what you require to prove is so patent uh, that in uh, the question, the point which was argued, I was there at the time an argument was taking place, Shantabai, which probably in uh, the versus Indian Medical Association, Parasan was at his best here in Madras High Court. He was able to sell this idea that doc, the uh, judges and the persons hardly understand what the doctors do. So don't give them the privilege of deciding whether a doctor was negligent or not. Justice Raju and another accepted that idea. Supreme Court upset it. And then it's uh, a clear case of negligence. You don't prove anything. A person goes there with a tumor on the left side to remove the right side tumor and paralyze the left side. Then there is negligence. There are criminal negligence of a different type. When we are talking about deficiency of service and the Consumer Protection Act, I was saying obvious person method of finding something, then he was right. Then invasive comes an issue of whether you have taken consent or not. No invasive procedure is possible. If somebody wants to excise a wound, you must, the doctor must ask me. By itself, it will probably get dissolved over a period of time. I can incise this. Uh, it can be painful. If it gets septic or something, uh, it won't get septic because I operate under aseptic conditions. If it does, we'll still be able to carry. I secure all information. I go through, yes, doctor, now remove my tumor. Then whatever happens, even if it ultimately uh, results in a gangrene and my hand is cut, the doctor cannot be proceeded against. An invasive procedure of doctor undertook that resulted in uh, a pregnancy. The question to be asked to us was that explained that there is a, a greater chance of a miscarriage if an invasive procedure is undertaken. Was there a reason why this was preferred than the other one? Did the doctor inform that? Depends on a factual situation. What was disclosed? What was discussed? What decision was taken? Who allowed that kind of a decision ultimately to prevail will determine whether there was a medical negligence or not. That, I suppose, is the question which will take. I'll take it from him. So there's a decision of the U.S. Supreme Court many years back uh, in Cary versus Bell delivered by Holmes on intellectually disabled uh, children not being allowed to take birth in this world and a state law prohibiting the same. And the U.S. Supreme Court upheld the state law on the principle that uh, the same principle applies when you uh, inoculate somebody or uh, you cut the fallopian tube. So this, this has never been overruled in US uh, ever since and uh, your comment on that. Uh, there's nothing like so many countries, the United States Supreme Court judgment is Supreme Court is supreme only in Supreme Court and not for us. Uh, so therefore, we don't need to really feel ourselves fettered. The Supreme Court does not. The Supreme Court, USA, there are various approaches. U.S. manner of looking at law is very different. You can have somebody going for, from here to a treatment there in the country where her husband was, uh, uh, was probably to be made a prime minister later. She could be served with a center, uh, serve summons and then taken. You'll know it, the same kind of thing cannot happen in our country at all. So therefore, don't think everything of what is coming from the Supreme Court gets to be, from the U.S. Supreme Court, gets to be accepted or, or ought to be accepted. The, and judgments are product of times. When you're talking about homes, you're talking about time which is about 60, 70 years back. So therefore, the same principles are still not there. Uh, eugenics was something which was uh, decried. Uh, your uh, ethnic cleansing, if a person with some disability, uh, that child shall not be allowed to be uh, born. In fact, all the Nazi experiments were only uh, geared towards that. What type of uh, uh, gene uh, combination is good? Uh, what type of persons shall not be allowed to be born? So therefore, uh, we have come past that. 
and that's why I said in a, a small way that there is, a, I've tried to handle it in a book which I've done, uh, where I've said this, that there is a very strong Christian faith, and I'm sure in every other religion uh, as well is there, but that's a report of judgment, where they say, I have a right to decide, and it is uh, my Lord who in, impresses me with that duty to bring the child to a full term, deliver the child, even if there are uh, deficiencies. Abnormal uh, uh, child, uh, uh, supposing the leg is to be growing somewhere here instead of there. There are issues which the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act permits, where there is going to be a serious uh, genetic abnormality which can impinge on a child's uh, normal growth or normal living. You can terminate, but then you can't force uh, this kind of a person will not have a child. This child will be uh, uh, um, uh, 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 afflicted with Down syndrome, therefore will not have a child. That kind of a thing is not possible. A person has a right to retain the fetus. And there cannot be a law which will say, we, if that is done, it will mean uh, an offense to Article 21 in the way we understand. A right to dignity in life, it has always been seen as a right to dignity in death. Right to life is not merely a right to life, merely in a vegetative state. Right to meaningful life in all its facets. So therefore, that person will decide whether he would have a child or not. And if there is ever a law that with abnormalities will have uh, that terminated, then uh, that right to terminate will be on a person who carries that, then through a law which will allow, which will direct that a doctor will carry out wherever he carries through a sonogram, find some abnormalities, he'll immediately recommend a, a termination of fetus. That will not happen. So therefore, uh, I won't know with the Supreme Court, uh, US Supreme Court decision not upturned in Supreme Court, Supreme Court, if it was not upturned, probably it's not tested elsewhere. So therefore, um, in our country, as I understand the law, that we're not in the face of Article 21, that kind of a law cannot exist. Sir, Sir I would like to ask a small question on behalf of the VVR. I had occasion to interact with doctors of Kumbhakonam and Tanjavo in a meeting. In the olden days, when I approached the doctor, the best way they say is go for a scan, costing about 3,000 rupees. They say the Consumer Protection Act is there. Why should I take a chance? If uh, whatever they had, I don't know. The better way is go for a scanning and avoid all after, after day litigations. What is the protection available to the doctor? Because I had occasion to, at the invitation of Dr. Varadarajan, I went to Kumbhakonam and I to talk to them. I encouraged them to practice the olden days practice, buying three rupees drug for the fever and headache. But they are reluctant because of the Consumer Protection Act. What is the remedy available to the doctors on that? By and large, uh, medical pr uh, paternalism prevails in India. I talked about uh, doctors being demigods, uh, treated as such. Uh, nothing obtains greater truth in Indian social conditions than that. Uh, doctors uh, normally are persons who do not want to harm. It ought not, it's uh, overdone in some of, uh, I meet with doctors reasonably frequently. Uh, I, I have uh, helped the PGI develop uh, 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 protocol for withdrawal of life support and therefore I speak to you from an experience that persons that take a doctor to court for deficiency of service in court, we must believe that courts by and large are protective of the doctor's uh, treatment and their understanding. In India, it is no good merely proving uh, lack of uh, ultimate failure in something. Can you believe that uh, there is a judge, judgment of Madras uh, Commission, uh, Consumer Commission, where a famous doctor, ENT surgeon who is running in Punamali High Road, he, a person goes for uh, a tonsillectomy, he dies on the uh, operating table. On the face of it, it may seem so uh, strange, a person who goes for an infected tonsils is dead. So therefore, it may seem like doctor failed somewhere. That was uh, the case. And then the state commission said that death he doesn't have in his hand unless he did some act which is a procedure which was not accepted standards of practice. That is the key word, an accepted standard. Did he deviate from the accepted standard or not? For an ailment and a headache, you go, you give a tablet. Doctors who were at some point of time expert diagnosticians who will uh, look at you as you come in there, they used to say, uh, 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 
Shetram Ji may know. Guru Swami, I believe, uh, my father used to say, he's now no more. If he had been there alive, he would be 103 years. And therefore, you know what I'm talking about. As a patient comes into the room, he will say what illness he's suffering from. He would touch his hand and then write the prescription. Any doctor would dare do this now? You'll have to put you through a defensive practice in medicine has come about in the recent time. Probably the West start, now West has gone to such an extent. My uncle who went to USA was foolish enough not to take, he thought it was there for about two months. He does not require to pay a needless premium of medical insurance and he went to USA. His wife felt ill. No doctor was prepared to see her. He came back immediately for an ordinary ailment of what ultimately was treated here in two days time by a doctor. Doctor is not prepared to touch a patient if he does not have medical insurance. We have come therefore to stages where doctors are needlessly defensive or where they can be reasonably aggressive even to find out. So therefore these tests, investigation and all these things, they serve two purposes. Uh, we, uh, ethical practice is what is dictated through the Medical Council re uh, regulations of 2002. In that you say a doctor shall not advertise. But then the exception is that uh, 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 companies and things, uh, hospitals can advertise. In fact, an amendment is also now sought. So how do they, uh, because they don't advertise a doctor, they advertise facilities available. These are all euphemisms practiced. I saw an advertisement as it was coming. There was no facility at all which is talked about. Somebody, you want your healthy bones, you, you have, you walk uh, troubled, at 40 plus, you have your knee removed. How that kind of deceptive advertisement I saw in the morning when I was going to the temple. So hospitals do things uh, because they invest money. Hospitals where again, I've, uh, if they draw from public, there are hospitals in India which are public limited companies. They borrow money from the public, they declare dividends, they have to make a profit. Hospital making a profit would have been, a doctor making a profit would have been unacceptable sometime back. A doctor uh, takes his money for the services rendered, you don't even talk about profit for a doctor. The profit has earned, you earn something and you, you, you have it there. You don't make a profit. You, when you talk about a profit, you bring in an economic component of uh, uh, what is uh, the cost, what is uh, the um, uh, uh, what what is the value of which you have secured, what is the difference, what is the profit. It's always a commercial element which brings a profit. Scanning three thousand, four thousand rupees. Why would I do this? Uh, you are defensive. You th supposing a headache, you treat him for a, a headache and he goes away to another place. It turns out that it was a tumor. I went with a, uh, when, was it, when did you first have the problem? I had the problem on that day. Uh, he went with a headache, did the or doctor immediately order a scan? No judge will ask that question. You are needlessly defensive if you are thinking that I will order a scan the first time when a person presents himself. Give him a medicine and anyone uh, judge I would like to believe if he is uh, understanding what he is saying. Uh, you took a, uh, you had a headache, you arrived here, you had a tumor. Uh, oh, that uh, patient, uh, that patient will immediately take that doctor for a uh, medical negligence. This is a needless apprehension. Nobody would do that. If he does that, you'll fail. On a first appearance, nobody or something probably immediate uh, detection was possible. Brilliant doctor. Supposing he did not have a doctor to read it in my uh, hand, a POP is fair enough. Yet another doctor thinks open reduction and then uh, is what I will advocate and then cane ailing I will do. That is also possible. Uh, I did uh, this in USA. If I, a woman, the most natural thing to happen after uh, marriage is invariably uh, uh, having a child. So therefore a child which is born, the societies have gone. Our civilization has known 3,000, 4,000, 10,000 years. Ch children have always been born. Animals also have their own uh, uh, calves and things. So reproduction is probably the most fundamental thing which goes on. In USA, if a person is uh, touching, putting a, a, a scalpel and then removing the child through a Caesar, uh, then uh, if, if she'll be, he or she will be sued immediately. India, every doctor now, the first uh, complaint of uh, uh, pain, uh, a cesarean is a done thing. Uh, uh, they will tell you things. It's a planned Caesar is better. You are 35 years plus, it's better. At a beyond an age, it's, uh, uh, it's risky, you would rather do through. You don't lose a child by any risk. If somebody says, no, the cesarean guarantees to me and without any risk, we'll go through with it. That's what is being done. So therefore, it all depends on the information we have, the 
trust we are able to oppose. I will not uh, take Sethi Ramji as a very serious uh, threat for our Indian uh, practice, but it all is a consensus we want. We want doctors who are driven passion for service, uh, the same way as every other person must come through a passion. Lady there. Sir, this is related to our repeated previous discussion about anti sterilization law in U.S. And in your opinion, we can't have such laws in the light of Article 21 and right to life. So my question is about your judicial perception on our law, because we are having a similar kind of law, the PNDT Act, Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques and the Diagnostic Act. According to that law, it explicitly prohibits selection on the ground of sex, but it blanketly permits selection on the ground of disability. That means we are targeting a kind of human beings. Because we are, a, we are having a group of human beings with disabilities. They are persons with disabilities. So what about this? It's discrimination and it's contradicting each other. We are prohibiting selection but permitting it for one kind of human beings. Then what is your judicial perception on this? Sir? It's, it, please give me your name. I'm Smitha. I'm Smitha Nisar. I'm a faculty of Shastra Law School. Okay, I'm so glad. Uh, Ms. Smitha's question probably uh, poses a dilemma which is, uh, uh, which is unique. Um, there, is a, there is an argument, uh, there is an argument which is carried for even a population policy. Uh, they've said, some persons have argued on that. It's not merely self, self, uh, sex selection is an issue in states, some states. For instance, in Haryana, from where I come, uh, you have 860 persons, uh, girls, uh, 1,000 men. There are not enough girls for marriage, and therefore people are imported from Bihar and UP to get uh, 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 girls to get married. So, uh, or again, um, uh, what is happening in certain southern parts of Tamil Nadu where uh, the, some uh, programs for a cradle baby came to be there, that the child that was abandoned was invariably a female child and never a male child. So therefore, uh, male is someone who promotes uh, society's uh, uh, continuity uh, and the, the uh, honor, and a woman who is always, who could be discarded. Um, they were, the argument in population policy was, a man, in some families you must have seen, uh, three boys, four boys, five boys, five girls, stop. Uh, six boys, stop. Here was, you, if you would ask, how did in these days of uh, uh, a triangle, red triangle, you had, this man had, uh, if you are a friend to that person, you may ask, you had five uh, girl children, how? Uh, you'll say, I was looking for a boy, so uh, second, uh, third, uh, fourth, fifth. Again, find of those way that you allow for uh, a selection at the right time. The, even at the initial time, if uh, termination of pregnancy is uh, possible and easy uh, in less than 20 weeks without any uh, hurt. If it is the, the second child is a male, the, the first second child is a female, the first child is a female, the man is likely to uh, uh, terminate. That's, we are exposing a society to a preference, sex preference, which is wrong. The Act, the PCNDA Act, does not allow for. Uh, sex uh, de uh, uh, detection of disability and removal of that kind of a child. It's wrong. The expression is not disability in that sense. Where an abnormality which is so serious, which can impair the parent's life itself, or the child will be having such a serious uh, issue uh, relating to the survival, you can allow for an intervention. So therefore, it is loaded expression. It is not every abnormality which allows for a detection to be eliminated. The fetus to be eliminated, if it is seen to be a child is going to have one finger less, is going to be having one, uh, one eye, there's some problem. That will not be an issue. I was saying that there can be very serious uh, issues. Of, at a very young, uh, at the fetus, you are able to detect a person with uh, two heads with the same body. There are serious abnormality which on birth can impinge on uh, the, per, the child's survival, the children's survival. You may, I already gave you the example of twins, uh, 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 twin heads with a child with one single body. What do you do? So therefore, these are instances where it can be done. This is again a society's response. You think this ought not to be there. It's a matter for a debate. That's exactly why I say all laws will not be taken. We need to challenge it every time. I'm so happy you're able to bring that point up. I want you challenging that. You must say now there are enough and more uh, uh, examples where uh, they have said even with a disability you need a child. 
so there you will have to somewhere make uh, a, a balance of a person who has an autonomy uh, on her body and what he wants to have if it is an autonomy relating to a sex society's response is that your selection and autonomy will not be tolerated if you are discarding a child because it is of the same sex we rejected a large body reject but if it is on an account of some disability we will still reject of disability of such a type which is may be rejected we still have a point for a debate legislature has taken an initiative in a particular way if you are seriously affected by that you must be able to say of oh, me i will not look because there is no law which compels it's ultimately a decision of what you will a doctor cannot say there is an abnormality lady i want you therefore to abort you have a right to say if there is an abortion what is the abnormality that child will be born with these kind of deficiencies it is uh, uh, genetically programmed to have certain inherit in fact a case which is probably you may have known angelina jolie is a famous actress i should look to the boys to say that before i tell the girls so therefore famous actress she decided to go through a, a, surger, a surgery and she uh, she underwent mass breast cancer and therefore mastectomy now in our times we will not pick up that even uh, that they have gone to stages where they are needlessly defensive they are they are an, a society which is at all times scared we have fought wars on our uh, 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 on our earth but us has never seen war on its ground somebody had to come there bomb some something that's what went they are finicky about so many things so therefore a kind of a response of what had gone there may not sell here at all here there is there are women in india who are stronger who will go with children with disability than what you will have elsewhere so we have persons who can see that a woman who sees a drunkard husband right through morning to evening she will put up with any person if it's a child with a disability in in a country in india you'll never find I, that's why i pointed out an example from ranchi mother is a touching example you must read the judgment how how it reads the mother says now it's my child i'll have have it if it has two heads i will have the child what all i require is i'm living in poverty give me let there be a funding for that so therefore we have stronger women here thankfully so therefore i hope that there is not a mother who may discard a fetus because there is an abnormality pc indt act it has to be read down to mean of such disability which is so serious sir but the first condition is down syndrome it is it is in a medical term but the first condition is the genital con condition down i said syndrome. therefore also i took therefore i was conscious about it and therefore gave an example of a down syndrome only if a child has a down syndrome what do i do uh, so therefore i said that see these are uh, some policies it's more a state of policy than the correctness of a decision uh, or uh, was such was something i'm not able to remember that it's a case of a lady who uh, uh, who after 3 months of marriage lost her husband the parents in law kick her out of the house it was in 1957 you brought only ill luck to us or only son died that girl went out where will she live so therefore she was resourceful enough she educated herself she went into she did her college she earned she acquired the assets she left she unfortunately had a death at 58 years leaving behind the outstandings and assets and shares worth the 2 and a half crores the application for uh, 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 succession certificate was necessary the parents had applied parents had supported the daughter seen her grow they were proud about a daughter and a daughter who grew like that when they applied for a succession certificate it was denied saying that the parents in law are opposing this therefore i am not granting to you then you look at it went to supreme court supreme court must have waited not to pass a judgment force a decision or a settlement on them this is how it will go the parents have seen the child the poor child come back to the uh, family after losing her husband and uh, she has earned everything you chucked her out in the year 1957 your shameless characters you are asking for her property in 2004 they must have disposed of they said they wrung their hands and said we are helpless section 15 says the heir at law act where the woman does not have her husband or children or heirs of her husband heirs of her husband are her parents and therefore she will the parents do not have a right that's the judgment of the supreme court don't think every law is fair the judgment which came to be was probably the most unjust judgment 
but we need to contest it and therefore good enough now there were so many in fact i will handle this judgment at every uh, place in undp program there at uh, in 2014 uh, april there was a program where we brought out several instances of injustice under the uh, into succession act and there is now thankfully some uh, response legislative response for change take this i would want you to test this PC and DET Act, which promotes this kind of uh, disability as a cause which will allow for a termination is something which must be, which is wrong. Challenge it somewhere. So therefore, we'll go through the challenges. I'm glad, therefore, a point is brought. So therefore, I'm not, I'm only saying what the law is. If there is a law which must be challenged, challenge it. Find out there is a justification for a challenge and then you'll win probably. You, it all happened after so many years. Whether a person could, after 377, whether it is right or not, was decided from, from that day to 2000, uh, 2011 was probably the Delhi Court judgment. Uh, 2009 was the Delhi Court judgment, 2009 maybe. So therefore, uh, suicide, whether a person has an at uh, attempt to suicide, whether it is wrong or not. Ratnam versus Union was the first judgment where they said it is bad. After so many years, 100 years, eternal judgment in uh, Gurvinda Kaur or some uh, case where they said, no, that previous Ratnam is not correctly decided. So therefore, they are open to uh, 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 things. That kind of decisions can still go. Open to challenges. I'm glad you're taking that issue. Yes. Good morning, sir. I'm Narayanan Chandrasekhar, uh, fifth final year school uh, BLLB. Sir, you were discussing about euthanasia and uh, uh, mercy killing, sir. Wh sir, what in your opinion should be the procedure for approving euthanasia for, uh, for a person who is in vegetative st state? Since there is no uh, set out rules or uh, procedures for ap approving uh, euthanasia, so what should be the procedure for? Uh, in Aruna Shanbagh, it is the leading decision of Justice Markende, Khaju, and another. They have recognized the issue that uh, there is no law which regulates this. There is a difference between active euthanasia and a passive euthanasia. Active euthanasia is when I have a pain. I call the doctor and said, put me to death, doctor. I can't suffer anymore. All right, you want to die? Die. This happened in a, a peculiar way in, a, uh, in USA. Katrina was, don't talk about the actress uh, Katrina, Katrina was a, a hurricane. Uh, a hurricane hit uh, USA in some place. There were four persons who were suffering. A doctor simply killed them. He injected uh, 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 poison and killed them. Why did he do that? I said, these people were suffering. They had been a, a serious, uh, for four days they had not eaten. They were looking emaciated. I thought it will be a waste of resources to inject them with uh, any nutrients. So relieve them of the pain. I injected uh, uh, poison and killed them. He was justly convicted uh, for uh, manslaughter. Uh, but then here is a, a doctor who takes a decision to kill them because he thought they were suffering. Holland is a country which allows for an active euthanasia, which is called as assisted suicide. A man who is unable, therefore we have about UN, United Nations, a strong disapprovals for this assisted suicide which is taking place in Holland. 10,000 persons died in one year. They thought this is uh, chaos. They, they sounded alarm. What is this now? You can't allow these doctors to decide. To what extent a doctor can decide must be decide in your hand and what you and I will decide for the society. Doctor cannot decide what is appropriate at all times. You need to be at all times consulted, conferred with. That is what we talk about uh, informed. So Aruna Shainbagh therefore lays down, there is no law we, in our way, is with nothing. Uh, Aruna Shanba's case is probably one of the most touching uh, cases of a nurse who was beaten in the head by uh, a rod, made uh, to uh, uh, made to uh, uh, lost her consciousness. She was tied around her uh, neck through an iron chain, and uh, a hospital uh, wa uh, a ward boy committed rape. That happened when she was a young woman of 28 years. She is now 67, does not know where, she's, where she is. She is all, Aruna Shanbag was a journalist who has been visiting this patient. A lovely, uh, handsome, who devoted her cause of her life in a bed with, uh, uh, in a state which is pathetic. He said, now let this lady die. No, the matter went to the Supreme Court. They said, no, I, there is a, uh, uh, there is a uh, flicker every time you play music. She likes certain types of uh, uh, food. If you place it, you can immediately see her eyes dilate. Look at such, uh, 
such small responses in a human being. They said, now, a woman who can enjoy music even now uh, would respond to uh, certain uh, interesting uh, 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 taste. She still registers, don't kill her. That was the judgment. Then they said, now, it is, uh, there could be truly instances. See, what can happen in withdrawal of life support, that's where probably, where it's not assisted suicide. You do something positively to kill a person. Uh, you will not have, the law does not admit that. But withdrawal of life support is a major thing. In a hospital situation, a private hospital does not withdraw at all. Your worry at all times is, when are they going to withdraw? Because they want more money, the patient is there. In a hospital, the, the government hospital, that's invariably the issue. They want, they withdrew everything, they did not uh, try enough because there was an MLA son who had to be admitted in the hospital, there was no bed, therefore they withdrew. We have suspicion when it is the hospital, uh, government hospital, because the withdrawal of life support is something to do with the you, resources to what extent you can spend. Therefore, in Arna Shanbag, therefore, when you can do, they say, there must be a committee of persons, the, they must apply, they should go through the High Court, a, a decision must be, an order must be approved by the uh, High Court. In fact, Arna Shanbag lays down in the last paragraph the procedure to be adopted. You say there is no law, the law is there, what is stated in Article 142, how it should be enforced till a legislation takes over. The matter was therefore brought before a decision when Justice Sadasu and another two persons were there. Before retirement, he did not have time. He closed that and referred to a larger bench, whether to euthanasia, to what extent it's permissible or not. Is what is an issue which is still engaging the attention of the Supreme Court. It's referred for a larger bench. Arna Shanbag is not the last law. They were seeing that it still has a kind of a court control for a life. Is it correct? Do we not have a policy stated very clearly? Do we allow for individual predilections of a judge to decide whether a person is going to live or not? It cannot be so fragile. It should be on a firmer basis. That was the, uh, that was the view. And therefore, referred to a larger bench, maybe a legislation may dispense with it, may do something else. Sir, uh, we were discussing about the defensive attitude of uh, doctors when it comes to cases. Uh, in case of emergency care, like for example, you bring a patient, like a victim of an accident, the doctors do, uh, do not consent to treat them because they are scared that they might be called to court as a witness, they'll have to go to police station endless number of times. They don't uh, treat them because they don't have medical insurances or have not filed a police complaint. Uh, even though there are no pr uh, legal impediments as such, even though, if the, even though uh, the courts have held that the doctors need to be co called to the courts only if, you know, uh, they, the requirement of as them as a witness is necessary, why do s doctors still refrain from giving such treatments to, uh, you know, patients of em who need emergency care? What reform could we possibly bring in to their mindsets? There are two things which are now done. Act has been essential in uh, by the Parliament as a model legislation for other states to follow. There they say every establishment, in order that it obtains a license, must have emergency care everywhere, medical care. No hospital, no doctor can say we don't have physics one go. But what you have said is it happened in Calcutta. It's a reported case from the National Commission. It's there in my book. I'm not able to give you a citation. Look for a search. You'll be able to find out. I've uh, dealt with it in a book uh, relating to um, a psychiatric injury and a, a secondary victim. A secondary victim is a, a person who survives something, who was not directly the victim. Supposing my child is administered with a medicine and it has gone to a comatose stage. I'm not the victim, the child was the victim. In uh, Spring Meadows case, uh, from the Supreme Court. You look for Spring Meadows, you'll find that answer. Uh, they said, although the child is the primary victim, I am uh, I'm, I'm put to sufferance by seeing my child suffer. I'm also entitled to compensation. The question arises, uh, uh, is answered this way. It started with the British understanding of a case where a car was backing up. Her child was playing somewhere there. For a minute, the child had gone somewhere. The mother who was a pregnant mother thought the child, had run, uh, the child had been run over by the car, backing up without an on. She had a miscarriage, she filed a case. They said the child was not hurt, the car went on its own way, you have a miscarriage, why will he be answerable? They said secondary victim he was, she was, whether he was taking the car in such a rash way for a woman could have been scared was a question with their rose. 
this was the point which was taken in a Calcutta case, where a person was brought with a, in a seriously injured condition in a road accident. The hospital asked them first, who is this man whom you are bringing? He says, I don't know. He is hurt on the road. I brought him. Can you deposit some money? He says, no, I don't have a money. I don't know even who he is. They turn the per person away. They say, I can't, we can't, our hospital cannot register. It's a decided case from the Supreme Court now. You'll have to see that. What is that case? The, 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 or the National Commission. The, the, child, the person is taken to uh, the uh, government hospital where he is declared dead. The doctor there says, if immediate blood transfusion had been given, you would have survived. In that minute of your uh, hospital not willing to take an emergency care of its requirement of to know who the person was and all those the defenses which they had, the court said, we punish you with 10 lakhs compensation for what you did. So 10 lakhs was probably not a big deal. But then I was happy that the judgment was there to say that emergency service as a hospital to say that we'll not treat you is not what a hospital can ever do. That money has not been given to us, therefore not treated first. It's wrong. It's unethical. So therefore, that is how they've responded. The National Commission responded with that. And uh, therefore, they also award, there they said uh, in that way, look at a parent, a parent who did know that the child was, uh, 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 the boy who was 19 years of age, had been run over and he had been killed. And they come to know that uh, some uh, unclaimed body is there in the mortuary. They go and see. And they ask later, how did this boy die like this? He was brought late. If he had been treated elsewhere, he would have been saved. That is sufficient for them to lay a claim and secure a compensation not merely for the death, but for the trauma that they had to undertake as secondary victims, that a child had been discarded like an, uh, uh, an unwanted uh, child. So therefore, uh, law protects them. Uh, uh, the emergency, it's no answer in a case of an emergency care that they did not give, administer it because we didn't know the identity of the person. They did not deposit the money. All that will be medically negligent. That is unethical because there is some of the hypocrites' oath gets uh, imprinted through the uh, medical uh, regulation of 2003. There they say uh, that you will treat a person, to lessen the suffering, uh, recompense for uh, what is to be done, uh, so preserve, uh, uh, to uh, understand the dignity of life and to preserve life. All these are hypocritic oath which are brought through regulations under the MCI uh, Act. So that regulation is a binding law for a doctor. If it breaches, if he breaches any of those ethical codes, his, uh, his, uh, his action is actionable. Sir, is the case law? Yes. Yes. Tell, yes, tell me. Your Honor, Lordship, I thank you extremely for the nice lecture and understanding of the situation. I would also like to compliment the students on their knowledge of medicine in addition to what they have got. We, because most of the questions they were asking related to surgery and um, obstetrics and gynecology, which I would expect from the medical students. Sir, the problem is, I have been a president of the medical council itself of the Tamil Nadu, IMA, AISI, and most of the national bodies. I have been in practice for 44 years the professor of surgery for more than 40 years. Now, I compliment you on the excellent lecture and understanding of the situation. But when a patient comes to the doctor with a problem, he comes with a personal problem. That is, whether it is an induced abortion or she induces abortion and then comes to the doctor, the life is at risk, you can't disclose. He stabs somebody, he says he is hurt, he doesn't disclose. The patient comes in a situation, he cannot be revived, nobody is willing to take risk. A patient, dead patient comes in, a body is brought, because the taxi fellow has to put it in some hospital, he puts it in your hospital. Most often, some of the situations are beyond control of the any big hospital, leave alone. Not all, hospi not all hospitals can be equally equipped. That your Lordship will understand. Your small hospital doesn't have all these facilities. The easiest way is to transport it to the next day. I'm not uh, asking. And again, when situations are favorable, nobody complains. When situations are unfavorable, they start complaining. There is very well a Supreme Court case in which an IAS officer admitted a father, his father, who has got a brain tumor. He cannot be survived at home. He is kept in the hospital only for convenience of the nursing care. This came to the Supreme Court. I will tell the judgment also. You, you might I know it. Uh, so, the, the, so, so 
then at the last minute the oxygen was not available then the hospital was sued for 10 lakhs this was the patient could have been very well refused and he was also refused things happen in our favor also after spending major chunk of money in very big hospitals they come to us only to be kept in a private nursing home for safety of nursing care and then they so and uh, recently when formulate i formulate your question doctor sir formulate your question no the main thing sir most of them they come with personal problems but we don't want to answer because these are my observations sir now when individuals are affected they blame the doctor they go to the court laws do not exist in every situation as you say the judiciary has to frame the law and then give it come to the help of the doctor or to the society the law has to be formed only subsequently so i think that was well brought out in your lecture and i appreciate it and we have to hold a similar meeting so that we will be able to come with proper solution that was a substance which i understood from your lecture because when the supreme court judge when the when he passed a compensation of 5 and half crores against a private hospital there was no complaint from the throughout india by television but when the same judge delivered the judgment against gsx last starting with obama to our prime minister to the entire television it was a focus the public is worried when the public at large is suffering the individuals are worried when they are and they sue the doctor so the doctor has to come to the help of the judiciary and judiciary must understand the problem of the doctor which it does and then go to then suggest uh, ways of forming the laws to the government am i right sir i think this is the question uh, one thing we all need to know is uh, uh, any doctor uh, is uh, I, as i now see them i would want to assure uh, uh, our doctor uh, that i i have i i've done the previous edition of modi's uh, jurisprudence and the next edition is coming with uh, five doctors uh, with me on my panel Uh, i therefore interact with them in a large measure uh, i hold uh, i have addressed students of uh, uh, the law from pgi as well as other doctors just not a brag merely to tell you i understand your problem uh, the doctor's perception is uh, that this kind of consumer courts uh, they are killing our initiatives uh, they are uh, they are sue us for all things be fair that amongst us there are so many uh, bad elements who do things which are inappropriate so therefore um, if in a large way persons have uh, gone to courts to redress the grievance of a negligence uh, courts are normally protective and it's a kind of a class response i must again say this, i'm using this expression with uh, uh, some concern that you don't get me wrong but a doctor gets more protection uh, in courts from a judge than a judge protects a labor or an industrialist uh, the truth is that because they see them as uh, professional fellow professionals what will it if i committed wrong and uh, write a wrong judgments it gets corrected uh, uh, gives a compensation why would it, if i am a judge i would like to speak for judges that uh, reasonably protective about the doctor's action although ultimately failed we put it through a test of whether this conformed to standard practice mark that expression if it did there is no action for negligence uh, but there are enough number of doctors not a big number but there are enough number in india everything is about the number you talk about 2% of doctors who are bad that's a large number anyway so therefore there are doctors amongst us the same way as judges amongst us the same way as probably the the lawyers amongst us uh, or unethical in our ways so therefore uh, once or twice um, there could be some injustice somewhere but believe me they get to be corrected elsewhere uh, but doctors by and large who do ethical practice ought not to have a concern persons who raise a lot of noise a persons who are themselves uh, creating a bogey of um, all, all these uh, wrong things have happened nothing has happened that access to justice uh, is a, a constitutional uh, guarantee that we give to people a person as much if they are not coming to court they are not coming to court because courts are ineffective 
If they are coming to court, then we need to pat ourselves that people still have confidence and come to courts. They don't fight on the roads. They are there in the courts. They, they don't use weapons. They have words as weapons in courts by dignified lawyers. So we transport uh, that kind of attention outside by what could be a fist fight to be birdy duel of learned persons in courts. So therefore, a litigation a doctor faces ought not to deter him from his ethical practice of what he would go through. That will happen if there are cases filed, doctors will face them. You create for yourself an appropriate uh, fund to fight out these kind of litigations where they happen. But doctors ought not to cringe or worry that uh, there are too many bad cases against us. It will be, if it is there, it will be there. But you shouldn't worry that they are there. They are bound to be there, they ought to be there. And if there is now a new trend after the Act, the Consumer Protection Act, that there are more doctors taken, uh, taken to the, these all, this will happen. A person will forget about it. I've known my cousin who died of cancer. His brother was so unhappy, he was ringing in pain, he was cancer, he was working in a copper uh, company, and that kind of propensity for cancer was high. And he said now, now you must take them, take them to court. This hospital I know, they please money. I was prepared to throw any amount of money. They did not treat him properly, he died. I let it go for some time. We wait later, let us see. Now I have collected all the records. And then by a month end, I said now, do you think we should act now? He died of cancer. His prognosis was bad. Do you think we should do? He realized no. So soon after a, a, a trauma of a loss, somebody acts. That's where probably lawyers need to play the correct role. Uh, that every death is not a doctor's negligence. Every uh, malfunctioning organ is not on account of a doctor's wrong administration of drugs. They need appropriate counseling. So that counseling becomes uh, to see whether a standard practice was adopted. There ought to be no wrong litigations. Litigations are uh, themselves by the length we take or themselves disincentives for persons to come to court. If they come to court still, uh, I think uh, hats off to them, they still think courts are the places. They are the best in dispute for any way, for any civilized country. So therefore don't get worried by litigation against doctors. We'll even out over a period of time with the responsible the lawyers. Uh, do we take that somewhere? Do we have a time somewhere? I'm not a problem at as all. A, as a judge, I mean, you do I'm say. Fine. I'm, no, no, no problem. I, I didn't want any of our students or any of you to think I'm holding it unnecessarily. I'm fine. You can decide when you want to stop. I, I have no problem. Well, uh, may I take it from uh, that lady there? She wants to say. Yeah, you decide when you want to stop. Yeah. And also, please mind, be mindful that I want to ask the last question. Yes. So decide you, when you want so, to stop. Yeah, you will decide. And when you last uh, the long, uh, last question, so everyone else is silenced. So you'll take it, lady. Give her a mic, please. Sir, I am faculty from School of Law. I have a question to you. I have a question. Your name, a uh, lady. Uh, Mr. Say Sangeeta. Uh, sir, why the consumer forum is not having a medical member in its body to decide the medical negligence cases, sir? Yeah, that's all the question. Uh, there is nothing like, see, what it talks about is an eminent person uh, understands uh, jurisprudence and things. Uh, but then uh, doctors to mind their time in courts from morning through evening, if they can do it in courts, is fine. But I don't know whether the doctors are prepared to spend their time in uh, uh, consumer courts. In fact, consumer court, the act provides for uh, a person uh, who is uh, an eminent person or something like that. Expressions make possible for a doctor to come in anyway. So, but then I don't know whether doctors are prepared to spend the time to come. That is my concern. So therefore, um, don't again think, uh, only doctors can decide doctors' problems. Um, there was a case from the House of Lords, a patent case which was taken before the court. Uh, the judge adjourned it for another date. The, the House of Lords adjourned it. Uh, and they said, uh, it's a very small point, they said. Now, it could be a small point, but I need to know what I'm going to decide. I'll take the time to understand the law and do. Whenever we decide cases where, which is technical, believe me, uh, that there is a kind of a preparation that we make. In any one situation, this again, I keep saying, it's a famous quote for me. Uh, just like truth is very transparent, you know at all times what is truth in a given situation. Justice is very simple. For me, I never let it worry myself. Uh, in any situation where two persons fight in courts, uh, justice for me is uh, immediately, uh, it just comes by itself. Uh, you are transparent, you are good, 
the, the uh, justice is there. So therefore, a doctor commits a mistake. If there is a doctor, you would have decided better. It was only because there is a lawyer, a trained person, a law, he does not decide. I will not take it as an argument. I understand medical practices as well as a doctor can. I'm not talking about I. I'm talking about a judge who can understand. So therefore, uh, it's a uh, doctor being a member is fine. But if he's not, nonetheless, it's fine. Yes, lady. Give her the mic, please. Yes. Your Lordship, this is Lavinia Lakshmi, a student of uh, law, second year BBLB. Um, is it not possible to look at surrogacy as a favor? Um, as in, there's this woman who can't hold a baby in her womb, and another woman decides to help her by giving her womb. So is it not possible to look at surrogacy as a favor then? All right. I was merely presenting a point of view, and I was not saying surrogacy is bad. In fact, in India, there is no ban against surrogacy, unlike in, US, uh, unlike in some states in USA, some uh, Japan or Germany, where uh, in UK it's not banned. Commercial surrogacy is bad, uh, but uh, the, the even a, a 1990 legislation has brought about this. When um, test tube baby was uh, conceived, that itself had given uh, room to this. In India, we had two, when we were, were talking about same-sex marriages, uh, where uh, in many countries they have been legitimized, uh, it can't happen unless we talk about a surrogate mother. Two women cannot have themselves uh, a child unless there is a surrogate mother. Uh, 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 the same way as lesbian couple cannot have, gay, gay couples cannot have. So surrogacy becomes essential, necessary, recognizable in certain ways. But in India, I have always a concern. Organ Transplant Act with all its benefits is still an issue for us. I'll tell you what happens in every case which is brought. I'm a judge and I'm therefore speaking from my experience. A, a Punjabi boy, I'm bringing therefore Punjabi and Tamil Nadu, uh, a connection of a case, uh, it's reported. Uh, a Punjabi boy comes to uh, Tamil Nadu, gets admitted in a hospital, hospital within one month for donation of a kidney. The uh, authorization committee before which the act uh, says, ask the question to that boy, why are you donating a kidney to a person who you do not know? He seems to be your master. <laughs> 